All right, we're going to go ahead and get started, and we're going to do um, in your packet in this year. It's pages 10 through 12 is the notes. Okay, and so it's a pretty simple, straightforward uh, lesson. I'm hoping it'll go pretty quickly, and then you'll have time to work on the assignment. So it's types of histograms, and we're going to talk mainly about just regular histograms and what they are, <coughs> and cumulative histograms. All right, so if you turn over in your packet to page 10, then you'll see we got these notes right here histograms and cumulative frequency histograms. So this is the final way to graph quantitative data that we're going to study. Okay, so the final. And truthfully, this is the way that much of our year comes from. Okay, much of our year comes from histograms. So it's the last and final and actually the most important. All right, so let's take a look at some basic qualities. So first of all, when you make a frequency table, then, you know, it's based off of your frequencies. So if I say we've got these little sections, then it's based on how many items there are in those sections. So how many of those, those are. And, you know, the higher the bar, what do you think that means? The more frequencies. Very good. Okay. And so, of course, it does have to be proportionate. So that is one thing that this notes doesn't say. I want you to write that in there. The bars have to be pro, that's, I could re write it correctly, proportionate. Okay. So, hi there. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, gotcha. So we need it to be proportionate. And so if it looks like at the tallest by, you know, if it's twice as big, twi has twice as much data, then it should be twice as big. All right. <clears throat> so that is a quality. Now, all the bars are the same width, unlike our mosaic plots. And here's something that's interesting. The bars touch each other. There are no gaps. So we had talked about that before. What type of graphs did we have that had something like this where the bars did not touch each other? What's that called? Okay, yeah, this is a bar chart, and the and I heard it. The reason that they don't touch is because it was categorical data. All right. And so whereas a histogram, this is quantitative. So therefore, you're going from least to greatest. You know, like from zero to one to two to three and so on. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So there's that. And let's actually go on over to the next page and build ourselves a histogram. And then we'll come back and look at the cumulative histograms. So here we go. On page 11, we have this. Peter and Chris Griffin go to a hot dog eating contest. And here's how many hot dogs each person ate in an hour. So that's a little scary to me, but wow. Okay, so, you know, some people, do you know people train for that, for the eating contest, I guess, to like keep their stomach stretched out or something? I don't know. It's just messed up. Okay, so now, so we're going to construct a histogram to display these results. And one, the first thing that we have to do is kind of like organize our data. Okay, we need to organize our data. So, what do you think our histogram's going to do? Go, it's going to go from what to what? So, like, what's our range, our min and our max? Okay, good. I think the minimum is 44 and the maximum looks to be 90. Okay. <clears throat> so, that's a range of about 50. So how do you want to organize these? Do you want to go up by fives or tens? It's about 50, so we maybe could go by tens. You want to maybe go from 40 up to 50 and so on, 40 to 50. Okay, let's do that. So let me show you how we write this. So I'm going to go 40 less than dash up to 50. Okay, wait, hold on. I did that backwards. My bad. So I want to do the dash 40 up to, and I don't want to include 50, so I'm going to go less than 50, okay? So that's 40 up to less than 50, and so then let's do the next one, 50 
up to, and then what's that? Less than 60, and so on. So then the next one starts at 60, up to, less than 70, 70, up to, less than 80, 80, up to, less than 90, and we do have a 90, so I'm going to have to include that. Okay, all right, so now we start tallying their frequency. Okay, so I'm just going to start dropping these things in the bar. I got 83, and so I'm just going to put a little mark that goes in that bar. 76, 90, 58, and so on. So I'm just putting all of these things, dropping those tallies in the section they're going to go in. 86, 66, 61, and so on. 50, 53, 61, 64, and 73. Okay. So I think I've got all of those here. So now we're going to go ahead and graph those. If this asks just for a frequency chart, then I'm just going to graph these numbers, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, based on how many we have in the frequency. But FYI, sometimes, and you have to watch for this, sometimes you are asked for relative frequency. If you were asked for relative frequency, we're not going to do that today, but I do want to actually go through that process. What does relative mean? Relative to what? Relative to the total. See, so if it ever says relative frequency, what's relative frequency really? Not average, but I heard it percent because it's the percent of the total. See, so I'm going to do that. Uh, how many how many counts did we have total? Two, three, four, five, five, ten. Looks like 15. 15 total. Okay, so there were 15 total. So I'm doing in blue here what we would do if it was relative frequency. And so then here we had 1 15th of the data, and we would do that as a percent, 4 15th, and so on. 5 15ths, I know that's 33 and a third percent. Okay, and so on. Um, and 2 15ths and whatnot. Okay, so if this had been asking you for the relative frequency, frequency histogram, then you would have to take it one step further and get the percentages. Okay, but we're going to do it as just a frequency. So I'm going to emphasize that by labeling the side of my graph that these are the frequency, not the percents, not the relative frequency. Okay, and so I'm going to start at zero as I normally would, and then I guess, you know, one, two, three, four, five, I'm not going to label each one, six, and so on, because this isn't going to be very tall. All right, now I need to start at 40. So how can I start at 40? Or how, because I, I need zero, I got zero here. So maybe what could I do to kind of jump ahead? Yeah, do your little railroad tracks, okay? You only can do that once. You can't do like railroad tracks in the middle of a graph. So you can railroad track to where you start. So I'm going to do like railroad track because it's a break in the number line. I'm not going to railroad track again in the middle of my graph, okay? So don't do that. So I'm going to start here at 40 and then 50 and so on. Okay, so now simple enough, just go ahead and put in your frequencies. So I'm going to make the bars the correct height. And they touch. Because this is a histogram, it goes up to those numbers. 
number two, or two, and then two, and then one. Okay, and so there's that. There's my bars. And so I'm going to color those in real quick with uh, something that's easier to color it in. All right, there's our frequency, our histogram. Okay, so the idea is you're supposed to know deep in your bones that it is very clear that the higher the bar, the higher the frequency. The higher the bar, the higher the frequency. More things are from 60 to 70 than any other. Okay. All right. So now, with this, could I do th something like find where the median was and such? I can. I can find a median. You know why? Because, oh, hold on. You're right. I cannot find exactly what the median is, but I could I approximate the median? I actually, because I have all this data listed out, I could put it in order and I could go ahead and find the exact. But FYI, if all I had was a histogram, I could approximate where the median is. How could I approximate where the median is? If I just wanted to approximate it, because we're going to do this later. How, what piece of data will it be? If there's 15 pieces of data, which numbered value is it? It's the which one? The, okay, okay, so it's the, yeah, in between, so I can split it in half, seven and seven, that's 14, so it's number eight, it's the eighth piece of data. Okay, so I'm gonna approximate the median, it's the eighth piece of data, so here I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it is going to be somewhere in which bar? The 60 to 70. So if I had to approximate it and I didn't have all the exact pieces of data, then I could approximate it between 60 but less than 70. Okay. And again, that's because I could say there's one piece of data here, four pieces of data here, and so I could find out what the total was and approximate it. Okay, very good. All right, that is a frequency or a frequency histogram. Again, how would this be different it was if it was a relative frequency? Yeah, do you know that it actually would have probably looked the same? I just would have probably changed this scale over here on the left and made it percentage. Um, but because it's all drawn proportionately, my bars actually could have been the same height and such. Okay. All right, moving back. Now let's talk about a cumulative frequency histogram. So cumulative meaning what? What? Cumulative. All up to that point. Good. Okay. We're going to accumulate up to that point. It is a running total of the frequencies. So all bars are the same width still. The bars still do touch each other because we've got still um, histogram quantitative data. And so here's interesting. We have the sum of the data in all the preceding, so it's everything up to that point. Everything up to that point. And incidentally, when we finish, we have the highest bar, and that includes the total of all of the pieces of data. So let's take a look at this right here. Unfortunately, the last item is not drawn to scale, so I don't like that about this. I probably should uh, fix that a little bit, but let's take a look here. Suppose that we have this number line here, and we've got our data from 75 up to 79 and 80 and 85 and so on. So if we were labeling this, it would look like that. And over here on the side, we have our frequency. Okay, so how many people got between 75 and 79? Four. Okay, good. So that is what this bar is representing. And I'm going to just emphasize that by telling you there were four people in there. Now, what happened with the people that got from 80 to 84? How many people added or 
are in that mix, in that section. Six. So we are adding, so see this height right here? This height over here on the left of that bar, that's the six. For a total of how much? Ten. Very good. See? So that bar is actually ten high because I added to it six. So if I had not had the information, so this height is six high. Okay. And then the next one is fine. It's still pretty much drawn to scale. I add to it three more. So this is a total of 13. It's this last one. There ain't no way. This is two. So that's kind of messed up for a total of 15. Now, if this had been relative frequency, let's just talk about that. If it had been relative frequency, what would we do? So they would reference the total. So like this is going to be 4 out of 15, whatever that amount is. And so what is this? Cumulat oh, if I say cumulative relative frequency, this next one will be based on how much? 10 out of 15. So that one's going to be up to 33 and a third. Or no, no, 67. And so that's 67 and two-thirds because that's two-thirds of it. Okay, and then the next one will be based out of 13 over 15, whatever that is. And the last one, 15 out of 15. So if it's cumulative, what does it always end at? Good. If it's cumulative relative frequency, it will always end at 100%. We're going to see some more of this in uh, next Monday when we talk about cumulative, uh, cumulative plots, uh, where we do an o, what's called an ogive. All right, moving on. Let's go ahead and make that thing right here. So we're going to accumulate the data. So let's have you kind of reproduce what we have up above and then do the accumulation of it as well. So, so fill in the blanks. So let's do that. All right, so I also noticed I did not do label my x-axis. This was number of hot dogs. Okay, so it's always a big deal to be labeling those. So this is number of hot dogs. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put my zero and then break and then start it at the 40 and so on. All right, now, notice on the left, I labeled it as cumulative frequency, okay? So we're going to go ahead and, you know, put our, we label the left. Okay, I'm going to have to go up to 15 because that's how many pieces of data I had total. All right, so here's my question now. What goes here in this spot? Good, that is five, because we are taking the one plus the next one's four and adding it together to get five. Okay, and then I add to that, this five here for a cumulative total of 10 and so on. And then 10 plus this two to make your 12 
and then another two gives you 14, and then the final one for a cumulative total of 15. So because this is a cumulative frequency graph, these are the bars that I am graphing. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that real quick. One, five, 10. 14 and then. All right. So there's how that looks when it accumulates. Um, let's see. Now, one question I want to ask you, what is happening if you have a bar or if you have a cumulative frequency graph that looks like this. So what would happen if I had a cumulative frequency chart and I've got this going on and this going on, but then look what happens. It does this for a while. What happened in this section here? Good. There was nothing added. So no, so somebody had something here, but then these three sections, nothing was added. Okay, good. All right, I think that's pretty much it. Here's another um, page of practice. However, we've kind of already been talking about the percentage as we went, and so I'm just going to leave it at that. I think you might can figure it out. Um, okay, and so duh, 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 um, one of the types of questions that we don't know how to answer yet is about the skew and which one is higher, mean, median, or mean. I'm going to actually give you a way to, you're going to learn those tomorrow. So if on your assignment, pages 13 and 14, you come across something asking you about the shape or about the mean or the median, skip that for today and I'll talk to you about those tomorrow. All right, so I think I'm just going to let you then go and do your problems on pages 13 and 14. Hopefully you can finish that in class.